Hello and welcome to the second episode of How to Music Make Romantic. If you missed the first episode, it will be linked in a playlist in the description of this video. This video is for those who want to use midis and or sheet music for their covers, um, as reading sheet music can be a little daunting and it's kind of like a second language. But I'm here to teach you some basic sheet music and will translate some of it into what I call DIY theory for everybody. One thing to note is that I will be calling notes and other phrases by the names commonly used in Europe slash the UK, not their American names. However, I will try my best to use as much American terminology as well as I possibly can. So with that, let's get started. So the first thing we will go over is the stave and a bar. The stave is the lines and spaces used in sheet music. So you see where you put the notes in the lines and spaces, that's a stave. In DIY theory, our stave is the place where we place our notes, like in real sheet music. It would look like this, with all the coloured lines and such. A bar is four beats, so there are two bars per track. For example, there are 24 tracks in one song maximum, so that means there are 48 bars per song to work with. One other little thing I need to note before we continue is, I only discovered this like a year ago, but in European copies of the game, when you hold a note, it shows the letter name. So it shows A, B, C, D, all the way up to G. But in America, it actually shows it as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, which is very weird. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would never understand. It blows my mind and it gave me a lot of respect for American creators since they have to know what each, you know, letter is. Alright, so the next thing we will be going over are clefs. Now clefs is, are the little like pat, are the little things that are at the beginning of a song to tell you what basic key you need to play in. I will be going over two, however there are more. The first one is the treble clef. This is the most commonly used clef in the stave. It looks something like this. But when translated to WarioWare DIY stave, the spaces look like this, and the spaces will be F A C E. Just remember face. So remember that weird baby face for WarioWare DIY. While the lines look like this, so the lines would be E G B D F. The way I learned how to remember that when I was younger is every good boy deserves footballs. There are plenty of other rhymes out there, but that's the one I was taught as a child. Next up's the bass clef. The bass clef is basically the same, <laughs> basically the same thing, except it looks like this instead, and the notes are laid out differently. The spaces would be A C E G. I wouldn't know a rhyme for this one, but just remember ace and a G. While the lines for the um, bass clef would be G B D F A. Again, I don't know any rhymes for this one because I'm still somewhat learning how to sight read it myself, but. That's basically what you have to go over, and it's on screen now. And this is how it would translate in WarioWare DIY. Next up are music notes. There are a few notes that aren't really required in WarioWare DIY, or at least are a bit weird to memorize. So I'll only be talking about ones that will show up from longest to shortest. So first you've got the semi-brief. Yeah, uh, you'll find out that the UK terminology is a lot cooler than what I've read about American terminology. So first we've got the semi-brief. The semi-brief is the longest note you'll see in a lot of sheet music. It is a whole note, so it is the length of all four beats in the bar. So think of it, you'll be able to fit two semi-briefs into a single track. The note itself looks like this, and this will be the WarioWare version. Next up is the minim. It is known as a half note, and is, as it's half the size of a semi-brief. So it's two beats in a bar, and you can fit four minims in a single track. The note itself will look like this, and next up here is the WarioWare version and how much space it will take up. Next up we've got the crotchet. The crotchet is the most commonly used note that I've seen, personally. It is known as a quarter note, since it is a quarter of a whole note, it is a quarter of a semi-brief, and it's only one beat in a bar and looks like this. And here's the WarioWare version. You can fit eight crotchets in one track. Next up we have the quaver. The quaver is, you guessed it, an eighth note, since it's an eighth of a semi-brief. 
It is half a beat in a bar and looks like this. Here is the normal note. And here's how much space it would take up in WarioWare DIY. You can fit 16 of these in a track. And last but not least, we have the semi-quaver. You're probably getting sick of how all these notes work, but don't worry, this is the last one I'll be going over. The semi-quaver is a sixteenth of a semi-brief, so it is a quarter of a beat and is the smallest note that fits in WarioWare DIY. This is what it normally looks like, and here is the WarioWare version. You can fit 32 of these in one track. Next up we'll be going over sharps and flats. See those black notes? The black notes are sharps and flats. Now, one weird thing that WarioWare did is that they only represent sharps. You will not see a flat in sight, but it is still the same thing. So, if you look at the black notes, you'll see the black note after C is C sharp. The black note after D is D sharp. There's no E sharp. You've got F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp, and then there's no B sharp, and then it just cycles through them all. It's a little weird and it takes a bit of getting used to. I mean, I know it's, I struggled with it at the beginning, but it gets easier once in a while. The sharps are the little hashtags, by the way. Then we've got the time signature. This is the last music theory thing I will be talking about during this video. But if anyone has any other questions, leave them down below and I will answer all of them along with any for other episodes in the last episode. A time signature is the amount of beats changed per bar. There are only two you really need to know about to start out, and even then I wouldn't recommend the second one for beginners. So first is the time signature 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four is how I've been explaining the rest of the notes, as it's the easiest way to follow and it's literally the layout WarioWare DIY gives you. The top four in the time signature is the number of beats, while the bottom four represents the actual kind of beat. So 4-4 four, four would mean four crotchet beats aka four quarter notes in a bar. So examples of songs that actually use this time signature would include Smiles and Tears from Earthbound and Beaver from Dr. Mario. So if you're able to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four in a particular song, it's in four, four. And lastly, we have the three, four time signature. I wouldn't recommend working with this time signature as a beginning, as a beginner, because it only Oh okay, yeah, WarioWare DIY doesn't let you change the time signature to help accommodate to this. But I will go over it anyway, just in case people are at the point where they want to try a 3-4 time signature song. So, like with the 4-4 four, four time signature, the 3 represents the number of beats. Well, again, the 4 represents the actual kind of beat. So 3-4 means 3 crotchet, aka 3 quarter note beats in a bar. Examples of songs that use this time signature would include Magicant from Earth by Beginnings, or Mother, and Zelda's Lullaby from the Legend of Zelda series. So, with a 3-4 time signature, if you can go 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3, then chances are the song is in 3-4. I apologise that that's a lot of information to go through, but I hope I explained it all okay. I will try my best to answer anything that people may need to ask in the comment section. And I will be back here for the next episode with some song recommendations and other tips. Alright, thanks for listening. Bye!